my name is Amanda Wolfgear and I'm here at the University of Missouri Soil Health Assessment Center. I work here in the lab and I run the active carbon analysis here. Today we're going to do an active carbon demonstration. So active carbon is important for soil health because this measurement uh, closely relates to microbial biomass. Um, it's a very sensitive to um, management, so it's a good measurement. But um, through it, we can get a sense of not just microbial biomass, but also uh, potential nutri nutrient cycling in the soil. To prepare for uh, demonstrating uh, how to demonstrate an active carbon analysis for the general for an event, um, we put together this guideline. This gives some bullet points about active carbon. Um, a little more explanation of it in terms of a labile carbon pool in the soil. Um, all the materials that you would need if, to put together your kit so you can go to an event. And then um, before you go out to an event, there's some preparation that you need to do. And then here's the uh, steps, um, the method for doing the analysis. Uh, you can find this how-to guide on the Soil Health Nexus website. This analysis when we're using potassium permanganate to analyze active carbon, we're actually measuring oxidizable carbon, but it's closely related to the active carbon pool. So this would be um, the carbon pool that is easily utilized by the microbes. So the permanganate that we're using um, is a strong oxidizer, and it reacts with the carbon in the soil. So basically, we're measuring we're measuring the amount of permanganate that is oxidized by this or reduced in the soil as it oxidizes carbon. And then through the equation, we can um, generate um, active carbon in uh, milligrams per kilogram is how the equation works. So to prepare ahead of time for the field event, um, a day or two before, you're going to want to mix up your, it's a 0.2 mole potassium permanganate, we call it a stock solution, OK? Um, here's the potassium permanganate. You add, it comes in a powder form. You're going to weigh it out into one milliliter, or sorry, weigh it out into one liter of deionized water. You're also going to add a specific amount of calcium chloride to that solution as your stock solution. Once you mix up uh, your stock solution, measure the pH. You need to bring it up to uh, 7.2, so add sodium hydroxide dropwise until you get to 7.2. Um, the potassium permanganate is very sensitive to light, so you want to make sure that after you mix it up, you store it in a dark colored bottle, like amber bottle, and then keep it cool in the refrigerator, okay? So this is what we call our stock solution. It's a 0.2 molar concentration. The day be or before you go to the event, you're going to create your standards, and that's what these are right here. They're uh, known concentration, different concentrations of your stock solution, in deionized water. So first you make your standards, um, then at uh, 0 0.05, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, and 0.4 um, moles. From that, you're going to add it. It's kind of the same way um, our last step there, but you add it to your deionized water. And this is the final step that we're going to measure before we go to the field event, because this is our, what is going to generate our standard curve that we're going to read um, the absorbance value of each of these. We know the concentration, so we can plot those against one another to create a line. And then from the equation of that line, we input the slope and the intercept into our equation to calculate active carbon. Once you make these and read them before you go to the event, uh, you don't need to take them to the event, but they're visually um, show the landowner, you know, um, Basically, the more carbon that you have in the soil that becomes oxidized as the magnate is reduced, then the lighter color you have. So the light color here is a higher active carbon concentration versus a lower, because we're starting off with a really dark color, and then we're reacting it with the soil and the carbon. So this all you're going to do ahead of time. Set up your Excel spreadsheet so that you have this information, and then once you get into the field, when you get your final results from the soil, you read the absorbance, you just put it in, and then you're able to generate the number for the landowner. So I'll get to how, you know, the steps, how we get there first, but this is homework that you need to do to prepare for the field event, all right? 
um, and then plan to take your laptop, have your laptop fully charged or extra laptop so you can do this during the day. Also, for each sample that you analyze, you're going to use plan for two 50 milliliter um, tubes. One is going to be for the initial step where we're going to add soil. The other you can do ahead of time before you go out in the event and to the event and you're adding 49.5 milliliters of DI water. And those instructions are in the packet too. So plan two, two tubes per sample and take enough of those with you. All right, um, plan to take plenty of deionized water, so gallons or have a backup. Um, you'll need lab gloves, of course, because the permanganate is a strong oxidizer, so it will stain your hands, so you wanna protect yourself. Um, you'll need your color meter so you can read the absorbance and it reads it at 550 nanometers is the wavelength so make sure you have one specific for that and then um, you'll want a timer because you'll see here we they are timed reactions so you need to keep a timer okay so assuming you're going to a field event you probably advertise ahead of time like bring your soil sample and we'll do active carbon analysis so it's important that you emphasize that these are air dried samples for landowners to bring. Um, but there's a good chance that people are gonna bring freshly sampled soil um, that's very moist. And we want an air dried soil because the water in the sample could potentially dilute um, the sample and then we're gonna overestimate active carbon. So it needs to be air dried. So I would prepare um, yourself with some dark colored pans or trays or black paper or paper plates, something that when they bring you moist soil, you're going to put a little soil out and then let it dry in the sun for a little bit. I shake it so the moist bottom comes up and that it dries faster. Um, I would also prepare yourself with a way to mark your soil samples or mark it so that you're organized. Um, you can even have sort of a sheet that when they bring their sample, you give them a sample ID, you can mark the sample, get more information from the landowner, their name, uh, their contact information, because if they don't want to wait for their sample to dry, they may leave and go around and you can just email them the results later, okay? So plan for that. Um, so assuming that we have air dried soil, um, you'll have a scale. I would just, um, Plan to set up your kit as if you don't ha won't have access to electricity, so a battery-powered scale um, is going to be the best. So you have a scale, some cup, something to hold up your sample tube. Take the cap off and then tear it out. And then you're going to add 2.5 grams of the soil. All right. Now there are volumetric scoops, if you're aware, that are pre volume that sort of correspond to um, a mass of soil, but these are highly variable. If you're just teaching about active carbon, then it's gonna be quick and easy, but if you're really interested in giving good numbers to landowners, I would just weigh out on a scale. So we weighed out our soil. The next step, we're gonna add 18 milliliters of deionized water, and then two milliliters of our stock potassium permanganate solution that we made beforehand. Um, the important thing about this potassium permanganate is once it touches the soil, it's starting, the reaction starts. So it's a timed reaction. Um, so you need to make sure that you're organized. When you add it, you're going, the first step is two minutes. We're adding it, we're shaking. Second step is 10 minutes. So as soon as you add the potassium permanganate, time starts. So I add that last. We have our sample. We're adding 18 milliliters of DI water. Um, here at the lab, we use this handy step, which is nice. Um, you can get a bottle top dispenser that I recommend would be the quickest for you in a field event to quickly dispense 18 milliliters or a graduated cylinder. Um, or you can use your scale. Once you have your soil in there, tear it to zero, and then you can add 18 milliliters with your scale. So ho however it works for you, but you need to make sure that it's 18. If you get more or less, then it could skew your results one way or the other. So that is important. So we're adding the DI water.
And then we're going to add two milliliters of our stock solution. Um, if you have access to a pipette, you know, that's nice and accurate. Um, but I also use these disposable transfer pipettes that you can calibrate for a field event. And all I did was just put a beaker of water on the scale, I teared it, and then I sucked up enough water so that it was negative two grams on the scale, which is equivalent to two milliliters. And then wherever that stopped, I marked it, my volume on the pipette. So now I have a quick and easy way to measure two milliliters in a field event. So on your potassium permanganate, you would have some um, as a backup with you, but I would keep it cool and in a dark, you know, in a cooler and dark place, and then just have a smaller container um, that you can use and then just add when you need more. So we're going to get two milliliters. Add it. So once you add, once you add your um, two milliliters of potassium permanganate, it's two minute shaking time. So start your timer for two minutes and then shake continuously for the two minutes. So now once your two minutes is up, the next is going to be a 10 minute settling time. And during this period, you want to protect your sample. Um, so we use a box here. We just cover it up and it sits for 10 minutes. And what's happening during the settling time is the calcium chloride that we added to the solution is flocculating with the soil and it'll um, settle out to the bottom. All right, so we're covering up our box and then we're setting it for 10 minutes and then we start. After the 10 minutes, we uncover it. What's going to happen is you'll see that the soil is at the bottom and then what we want to do is take 0.5 milliliters from this and we're going to add it to our pre-filled tubes with 49.5 milliliters of DI water. So total 50 milliliters, okay? So 49.5 here, we're going to pull 0.5 and you can use a transfer pipette. I also calibrated one for 0.5 milliliters. And it's important um, that you not stick it all the way down the bottom. We don't want the soil. And sometimes there's organic matter debris floating in the top. So you don't want from the top. So you just kind of go in about one centimeter, pull to the 0.5 milliliter line, and then add it to your sample. Cap it and then invert it to mix it. And then this is the final sample that you're going to read. All right. So these different color meters, um, we're reading at 550 nanometers. Um, some come with this clear tube or there could be um, um, cuvettes inside. Whichever it is, all you can just take from here and just pour it in. Pour it in and then cap it and then you read it and you're going to get your absorbance value. And then that's the value that you plug into your equation that you already have set up on your Excel sheet and then right away you'll get milligrams per kilogram. Or if you're interested in um, presenting the information in pounds per acre, then you multiply it by two and you get pounds per acre. Important thing that you to know is if you want to reuse um, this pipette for the next sample, um, you can do that by wiping off the outside, all right? And then pretend like here's our next sample that we're ready to analyze. First, you're going to suck up some of the sample to rinse out your pipette, discard it, so have a little container so you can discard the waste. And then you can take another 0.5 that you can use to analyze, okay? So this way, we're not, you're not wasting a lot. You can use the same um, transfer pipette each time. Um, so what you can take with you is you can print out uh, this chart the color scale that relates to concentration of active carbon. And then that way, when you show the landowner their sample results, they can hold it up and compare the color of their soil or their sample with um, the results in the chart and kind of see where they fare. So everything that I described here in more details um, are in our how-to guide for demoing active carbon in a field event.